This is L.A. Wildcats quarterback Josh Johnson, and this is the XFL Show. is cooking. Welcome football fans. This is the week of November 28th, 2021 on the road to kickoff 2023. This is for the love of football and this is the XFL show. I'm Alan. And I'm Brian. The USFL has team names and cities. We guess. I promise not to turn this into a Pittsburgh Maulers podcast, Brian. This is episode 198, Marking Territories, USFL in eight cities, all playing in one city. I don't know how it's going to work, but we got logos to talk about. The very question you asked of the USFL at the end of last week's episode, asking you received. I don't know if I received. um, I was very thankful this past week. I hope everybody out there was was as well. I just wasn't asking for this, so it's fine. I mean, whatever. You, I said, when will we you, get it? When will we get it? You there? literally said at the end of the show, <laughs> when are, where, where are the logos? Where's the oh, team I was names? Being, I was being sarcastic because remember all the fans yeah. that used to say, you know, know this. hey, XFL, <laughs> I know you're trying to change football, but when are the team names coming out? Like, that's that was what I was doing. They took you literally, though. Well, it just means that they're listening. And that's great. Thank you for listening to this podcast about the XFL. That's what we say at the end of every show, for sure. Of course. And if you have anything to say, you can always hit that uh, XFL fan line as well. Oh, absolutely. 724-565-4XFL. Hit up that XFL fan line. It's a voicemail. You could leave us one. Leave one and you'll get on the show or text it anytime. 724-565-4XFL. Be a part of the show. Or, of course, social media is a great way to do that. At XFL Show on your favorite social media platform. Interact. Ask a question. Give your thoughts on, I don't know, USFL team names and logos and saying you're playing for cities even though you're never playing in those cities in year one. And, of course, your thoughts on the the XFL. I'd love to hear some Red Notice uh, reviews because I was laughing – Almost as much at the reviews as I did at the movie this past week, watching The Rock in the biggest Netflix movie of all time, Brian. Shocker, right? The, the, the Rock, biggest movie of all time. That's great. It's no surprise. Uh, we're not going to give a review of the film here. It's not a film podcast. It's a football podcast. And we uh, get help putting it together from our great sponsor, Pretty Easy Podcasts. And you could go to prettyeasypodcasts.com. To get your own podcast started right now, you get the producer, you get the editor, you get all the help you could ever ask for posting your show to all the various platforms, looking good, sounding good, whatever you need, they got at an affordable rate. And you could get started today by just inquiring at prettyeasypodcasts.com. Because they make podcasting uh, pretty easy. Uh, so easy that they even helped this married couple do a podcast about movies. Maybe they'll do the Rocks movie. Marriage oh, and yeah, movies, Mar- check it out. Marriage and movies. I love that show. And yeah, it ta- I think they talked about Red Notice this past week. The Rock in the biggest movie of yeah. all time on Netflix, by the way. Maybe that get- – does that give the XFL an end to just have their games be the first live streamed sporting events on Netflix? I mean, he's got a lot of sway now with the net with the Netflix company, Bryant. Would you want to watch games on Netflix? This is not on our rundown, by the way, everybody. I, that, I, I, we haven't I don't actually mind asked it. that question. I mean, I don't mind. I'm going to watch these games wherever they're broadcast, really. But, I mean, Netflix, is, we all have Netflix. It's not like I have to go get it. I wonder so if I that would Netflix. be super convenient or if it would be awkward, if it would be awkward because you don't normally go there. But It'd it be might easier. happen one day, people. I, the Netflix app is way more useful or easy to use than, um, than like those other sports apps. Like ESPN Plus is just horrible. Oh, 
<laughs> you have to scroll and look and you click and then you signed in last time, but then you didn't sign in this time. Fox ne- Sports never is keeps, the same way. Ne- never keeps you signed in. Also, go you. I dare you to go try to find a CFL game live on the ESPN Plus app. It's there. <laughs> or an NHL game for the, that matter. They're there. But you got you got to basically, it's like hunting for Cleopatra's third egg trying to find the CFL game on the ESPN plus app. Maybe Netflix would be better. I don't know, but rant, rant over. And of course you can always answer that question. If you want to add XFL show, if you have a red notice review though, I'd love to hear it. Uh, let's dink and dunk real quick though. Brian around XFL social media, uh, going back to last week's episode, we talked about the USFL and they, announced all their executive teams and the structure of the season with the divisions and all the games being played in one location and a 10 week season. Brandon Anderson on YouTube said, so, okay, the USFL officially announcing start time, at least for 2022. Do you think this could change XFL's decision in actually starting a later time frame and not right after the Super no. Bowl? I feel XFL <laughs> should for sure keep the February time frame. But if they were deciding on an April start start frame, does this now change to not run head to head? We're going to get more into how the USFL affects the XFL, if at all, later on in the show. But this is a an appetizer to that, Bryant. You immediately said no in terms of kickoff times. Well, I, I, here's my thing: is I don't, I'm not too, I don't care one or the way or the other, really. I guess maybe if I did a deep dive into February or April, what would matter the most? I guess I could probably figure out which one's better for myself in terms of preferences. But if the XFL is thinking about April and this came out, I don't think they're like, Ooh, do we do, do we still want to do April? Like, I don't think that happened or will happen. The XFL, if they, if they play in February, it's because they wanted to play in February. If they play in April, it's because they wanted to play in April. Move your head down. <laughs> Grab the ball head down. You move forward. Onward and forward. Do you let it affect you? We'll get more into that. Brandon says keep the February time frame. Uh, I I think, I don't know. I think I'm liking that, the, ha- the happy tax day for a kickoff. I like that idea. Happy but, tax uh, day. Happy I would tax love, day. I, I would happy love that. Happy tax day. I mean, what a great, what a great. A great time of year, but we'll uh, we'll discuss that at a later date. But the USFL affecting the XFL, definitely a topic for today's show with all the USFL information coming out in the last couple weeks. Uh, Terry was on the XFL fan line, 724-565-4XFL. Don't forget, you can text or leave a voicemail anytime. Terry left a text. Brian said, I think the USFL's Fox ownership limits the league and already puts it at a disadvantage against the XFL. Do you agree with that? Because when you're owned by a network, you could really pretty much only be on one network and their, and their cable and all their channels, of course, but there's no sprawling across different networks and streaming uh, applications for the USFL, at least. I mean, the XFL had this in 2001, right? They, they were owned by NBC, but they were on other networks and now were, that were not affiliated with NBC, right? They were on, what channels were there? And they're on UPN and TNN, or TNN. was it Spike TV? No, it was. was I think it was TNN was... at that point still. Um, so it, it could happen. I mean, the the limitations of the USFL are are the limitations that they set themselves. They're owned by Fox. If Fox doesn't want to share any of this with anyone, and they want to take all the revenue for themselves in terms of having these games on for themselves, then then yeah, I could see why they wouldn't want them on other networks. Do you need them on other networks? You're on Fox or, or some sort of branch of Fox, of the Fox TV tree. So it's a limit, but it's also not a limit because, hey, if I was limited to only having my sports league on Fox, I think I'm okay. Pretty good. It's yeah. not bad. They have a pretty – they cast a wide net that whole their, – their big channel and, of course, their cable channels are expanding and not doing great, but – most people have them. I don't know about FS2. If you're having a lot of games on that channel, they might they might run into trouble. But <laughs> FS1's there for them. But I, I understand where 
a fan would think think that way. Terry uh, texted in saying, "Wait, they're limited, aren't they? While the XFL, it it is limitless. We'll see what they end up doing with the TV deal or streaming deal. Zzz, could be plural. And uh, remember who they have in the building negotiating that stuff. The some of the people that help the NFL get billions with a B from the likes of Disney and." course nbc fox amazon putting that all together for those 32 owners not too shabby we'll see what they do for the xfl but thanks to terry for texting in of course brandon on the youtube comment section and everybody else interacting we'll pick I, I our saw favorite a comment questions on twitter and comments on, every week i don't yeah. think we've ever really i don't take a i'm not a how do i put this i'm not an xfl defender in that then that i get offended when people uh, try to pass you're, talk, you're not a XFL. DC defender either. No, definitely not. Or a or a was it Cleveland? No, what are they? They're Guardians. Sorry, Gu- they're Guardians. <laughs> you're a Guardian of the XFL. I would sure. definitely say so that to that. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of over this whole like XFL failed twice talk. Like, I don't know. I'm just so over it. It's. It's false. That's a false. That's a false sentence to say the XFL failed twice because I wouldn't say it failed in 2020. It was very much a success, and it was put into bankruptcy. Sure, but there's a reason why it was bought out of bankruptcy, and it's being brought back because it's it's there. Yeah, I, even the people saying the USFL will fail that also irks me. Someone saying I don't see either of them lasting. Uh, gets to me because, like we always say on this show, one of them's going to stick. And I think it's going to be one of these two. Maybe both. Who knows how that works out? And I don't want to get to start thinking about that. I'll get a headache. How the future, <laughs> what the future holds for both leagues. It, it's silly but, to think that yeah. 1980s USFL has anything to do with 2023 yes. – or 2022, excuse me, USFL. And just as it's silly to think that 2001 XFL has anything to do with 2023 XFL. And really, you could say that 2020 XFL, it's a little bit more of a stretch here, but you, you could say that they're basically two different entities at this point as well, other than the namesake them, itself. I mean, from what we know about the leagues, we can't quite yet equate them. But I have, like I, we, we've, we've talked about that. I do th- see a lot of 2020 in the 2023 league. We already have people who have returned from that league, so uh, that's that's of course it will be different, but pretty similar and similar because it was not a failure. Uh, you're right, Bryant. Not a true statement when people say that on social media at all. Anyway, just thought I'd say that out there. Where are we going? Next? Put it out there. <laughs> yes, we're going to your favorite, the USFL, announcing that eight <laughs> teams are coming. Into Birmingham, Alabama, taking over the city for a 10-week season. Let's get into it. All the United States Football League Brian can handle in this week's Cover 2. Eight classic team brands, Brian. Some of your favorites. I believe you've you've always had a New Orleans Breakers uh, windbreaker, haven't you? You've been a big fan of them forever. No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, New Orleans. Michi- you got a Michigan Panthers hat anywhere lying around the house? Mm-mm. No? Um, I have a Las Vegas Outlaws mini football. That's that's true. You've got the classic XFL merch, but if you have the classic USFL merch, you might be able to dust some of it off and wear it or sport it, rock it, in 2022, because the USFL is bringing eight of their classic teams back for the return season, and they all are being given cities too, even though none of them are playing in those cities. I don't know how that's going to work, but here they are, the eight teams, Bryant, starting with the, the biggest and the best and everyone's favorite, the Pittsburgh Maulers will be in the USFL, along with the Michigan Panthers, the New Jersey Generals, the Philadelphia Stars, the Birmingham Stallions, the New Orleans Breakers, the Tampa Bay Bandits, and, yes, the Houston Gamblers. Houston Gamblers. Houston Gamblers. 
Houston Gamblers. Number one. There you go. There's your logos and team names you asked for, Bryant. What do you think of them? Was that your Houston Oilers chant thing that you're doing yeah. there? Is that what I got out of that? Well, I, I was can't like, do it. saying this three times? Yeah, the Dolphins Houston also Ruffnecks. do that, by the way. They they, they stole Ruffnecks. it. Houston it's, a, it's great. I, um, I say do it. Okay, so what is a mauler? A mauler is someone who uh, mauls. Mall. Would you like to go to the mall no, today? That's a mall rat. A mauler with a U is someone who just plows through the steel with that big old hammer. That that, that, that big sledgehammer. They also hammer. produce steel in Pittsburgh? No. Pittsburgh's a green <laughs> and tech town now. But, you know, <laughs> your history informs your the, your identity. A uh, mauler is someone who is all up in, in it, all up in whatever they're working on. I don't know. I like the name. The colors, though, if we're going to critique the logos, uh, I will say that the Pittsburgh Maulers have – what are they? I'm colorblind, but it looks like orange in there. Doesn't make sense for a Pittsburgh team to me. Uh, you should I just have – it down. Let's see here. Black and yellow if it's you're like a, a Pittsburgh purple team. purple and orange. So who's a purple and orange team in uh... – that Coastal Carolina right there? Is that what that is? Purple and orange. That's the Knicks? No, they're blue, aren't they? Yeah, they're blue. I don't think we have a purple and orange. Oilers. It's pre- I mean, it's cool. No, they're blue I too. Like, I, I, a, a guy wielding a big old sledgehammer is a cool logo, but I just want to change up the colors. Is that not the stars from Star Wars? Like That's how they do the stars in Star Wars, isn't it? Star. The font? Yeah, I think that's a Star Wars font. It's it's Star Warsian. I don't think General's using the using for Times that. New Roman. It looks like so that's very fitting. It's 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 pretty you know it's basic. General. Yeah, it's general. It's generic. five star generals. Uh, they do have five stars in their in their logo. Um, it's with the what are the what are, what's that flyer called? I'm not a florist. There's, for the crest um, of the New Jersey I have Generals. No idea. Rosemary. Do any of these stand out to you? Do you like, do you like any of these? The Michigan than Panthers any of the one X-Men? is kind of cool, I would say. I mean, that one was probably one. I mean, if you threw the Michigan Panthers one in there, the Tampa Bay Bandits like font is kind of cool. Um I don't know. I mean I love the I love the the bandits. Um Sim, it looks like the the stallions logo is incorporated into the bandits logo to me. Here's what this <laughs> for, is, and, and, and this is for everyone out there. This is not me crap talking on everything that the USFL is doing because it could very much so. It's more of it's like if if um I don't even know who the who's the who who created Pac Man. Pac Man. Uh, yeah. I don't. I want to say the the Namco Corporation, but I'm not a hundred percent on that. Okay, well, it, let's just say they they wanted the, to get that nostalgic feel out there, right? And what did they do? They they put it back out there uh, for 2022 on PS5, Pac Man for everyone to enjoy, and they didn't change a single thing. It's literally the same game. Why? Because they want to grab that nostalgic a- aspect of it all. That's what I feel these logos are. I don't even well, know if they, they change anything or not, but it looks pretty much like it came from the 80s. Well, you could have brought up an actual real-world example, too, for all of our video game nerds out there that uh, played the Nintendo Switch, Bryant, because they do the same thing. They bring back all their old N- Nintendo games. They don't change them at all. They just make them playable on the Nintendo yeah. Switch. Buy a Nintendo 64 game on the Switch. You know, yeah, the control's going to be different. Yeah, Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, it's all there. Uh, retro is cool in 2021 uh but i don't know about the this retro okay without knowing the history at all of these teams in the league seeing these kind of uninspiring i w- i'll say even for one like the tampa bay bandits logo and identity which if you know about the usfl is cool as hell tampa the tampa bay bandits undeniable super rad fun harkens back to burt reynolds Hard to get cooler than Burt Reynolds, but 
for someone young who's looking at all this, I mean, these are all kind of just blah. And like Brian said, general. Um, but uh, they the, the fact they're bringing them back is cool and a, a thing to sell to older fans and people aware of this. But, man, it feels just super – feels a little too niche. But I'm glad they brought these these teams back. They didn't really freshen them up too, too much. We'll see what they actually do when uh, uniforms come out, though, because – is the USFL going to be a league where it looks like all the teams were in throwback unis? I don't. I don't know. I don't, how do are they going to mo- how do they modernize them? Is one thing I'm interested to see. Crop yeah, top unis. The, every if everyone's wearing crop tops, though, I'm all I'm I'm t- totally down for that. Um, but you know the logo the logos are kind of I I think they're just the they're in the early stages. It feel like they're you know they they have time to really. F- do all this the market USFL, research on recreating these logos. USFL finally did something better than the XFL in fans' Ooh. eyes. They finally did it. What is Who it? cares about football rules? Who cares about players? Who cares <laughs> about, you know, how you're going to make money? Who cares about all those things? We have team <laughs> names, baby. That's what yeah. we want. That's what we care about. Let's go. But they didn't give us any like awesome uh, no. video if packages got team with great names copy and logo. No, who cares? We didn't need it. About that was the lore fluff. of each team. That was the oh, worst okay. part of that day. Is we had to wait five minutes for those videos to happen for us to those get all the Those were the best. Names. I know. What about- speaking like a fan. Okay. <laughs> Don't fans like team uh, 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 theme songs too? We need those. When are those coming? Yeah. The, Call they, me when you have team theme songs. No, no, no. Fans are completely happy. They're ready to watch the USFL in April. That's what they want. They wanted team names. Okay. Again, we're gonna get we're gonna get March you know, Madness. Gonna take, watch get, out. We're gonna take Flack again for for doing you know doing the USFL like this, but it does kind of feel like Fox executives are like, but they, they don't care. Just give them the logos now. Whatever. We'll throw. We'll toss together some teams on a field. We've money. Got, yeah, we got we got the games. We got at the field. You know, we're we're what we have to house players. We'll, we'll figure out a hotel somewhere down there where Alabama sure throw them in there. We'll get this thing going, man, and watch the money roll in. And our programming block is going to be set for April. We're kicking off in April. We want to do that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Nothing's going on April. Okay, yeah, perfect. And then Pittsburgh and Maulers. Versus the Birmingham Stallions, where Pittsburgh's the home team. Let's yeah, this that's let's talk about that now. Part two of the cover two, Brian. Let's talk about how this is the most unfair league of any league we've ever heard, covered as sports fans or watched as sports fans. Uh, Birmingham is home every game, while all the other teams are on the road every game. It's like going to your friend's house and playing Madden, and they always get to be the home team. Not fair. Not fair, Birmingham Stallions. But now if you're if you're game. if you get to host so if you're hosting your friends over for Madden and you're the away team, is that fair because you're still home, but you're just technically the away team? It, you're home the whole you're playing in Birmingham, you're home. I don't care what color uniform you're wearing, I don't care what it says on the score sheet. Uh, this is like when the Olymp the, the Olympic hosts always get more medals than they would normally because they're the home nation. Birmingham is going to be like the an Olympic host city. They're going to have that advantage. I mean, you, you, you're I assuming that there's going to be fans there to actually cheer on for this to actually be a, a win, a positive. Now that's I, I'm all for taking jabs at the USFL, but that well, seems almost it, it, like look. A low first blow, of all, right? honestly, it's not a low blow. It's a fair statement. Who knows how it's they're the going to tr- get the fans in the statement in the stadium? I just it's, it's a fair statement. Um, <laughs> it's the most. I mean, whatever. It's so weird to me that you name well, you have the cities tied to them. Like, are you? I know you're a Pittsburgh Mahler fan, but is it like? like well, see, there are there are stores in the Strip District that, in the past thirty years, you still could go buy a Pittsburgh Mahler's T-shirt. They still exist. People still remember the team. It's like just a cool retro thing to wear. So yeah, I have. Did you a see like twenty year olds wearing a Pittsburgh Maulers t shirt the same way they wear like a 
like a Ramones shirt or something like that, or like a Greedy. Yeah. They don't even know who it is, but it's just like yeah. a throwback type thing. What's your yeah? What's your favorite Metallica song, kid? Uh, the the one about the uh, the Sleepy song, the one about the the Sleep Monster Man, Enter Sandman. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> the kid wearing the Metallica shirt or the ACDC shirt. Yeah, maybe like that with the Mahler. What's your favorite a- ACDC? I, I'd have to say it's the one by my bedroom. Plug it in. It works yeah. perfect every time. I love it. The what? No, the SmackDown, the SmackDown theme song for sure. That one. That's my favorite. SmackDown theme by ACDC. That's my favorite theme song. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the city names being attached to these brands and logos is the is the most interesting part even more than what the logos look like we could have fun with that that's all a matter of taste but where's the logic how do we okay as a league where the USFL do they actually try to i don't know develop a fan base in those cities in year 1 or is it just strictly a a branding choice to keep the breakers attached to new orleans I mean, they're not playing in Boston. You don't have to worry about Boston not supporting the Breakers. You could still have called them the Boston Breakers because they played there too. You know, um, the the Houston Gamblers. Will there be marketing in Houston to get Houston Houstonians excited about the Gamblers? I doubt it, Brian. I highly doubt that. I think there's a um, there's there's got to be a plan in place for these teams to play. You can't call them the New Orleans Breakers and then move them to Boston next year. Like that well, the USFL did that, but the reverse. What I'm saying is you shouldn't have named them the New Orleans Breakers then. <laughs> yeah, they're pinching holding themselves now. Because in year two, we want to expand to cities. We got the Michigan Panthers. Oh, wait, we can't get any place for them to play in Michigan? All right, well, they'll play in Chicago. Like, they're... They're they're kind of pigeonholing themselves, and I don't know. It's just it, it's odd, and we still don't know really the structure. Are they are these teams all going to be owned by the league for sure in year one? It seems like that most likely. Are they going to try to sell them off into into to individual owners eventually, who will then take these teams to those cities? We don't know how it's going to work, but the fact that they gave them cities to represent. When the whole season's being played in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, there's not a lot of logic to it, but I guess we don't need any logic when it comes to that. Maybe just when it comes to any the rules of the football, the football game. League. Nope. That's not on the list of importance. That's way down there. It, it, I, th- I think there's other things that are more important than logic. Like, like what? Uh, housing players is pretty important. They did. They got that done. <laughs> they, uh, although do you, think, do you think they'll all play at, it'll be like a, a litter of puppies, right? They all kind of stay with the mom until they start getting sold off one at a time. They all get taken to their new homes one at a time. But then you're going to have like one that just stays in Birmingham because it can't really find a home <laughs> where it's going to well, go. The, the, well, the Birmingham stallions will be going to Birmingham in year two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You always keep one puppy. You always keep one yeah. for yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But there's always that one that kind of sticks around. Oh, you, you mean know. so like what if they can't sell the New Orleans team and then Birmingham gets two teams playing in the yeah. stadium well, for, for a now. season? Yeah, could happen. I don't know how that's going to work. But, uh, you know, the USFL, interesting. Really, almost I would say more bizarre the fact that this league is being put together the way it is than – the AAF. Now, when you bring up that, oh, it's just the Spring League 2.0, we don't necessarily know that. It seems like the Spring League still might exist and go back to what it used to. It's kind of up in the air, it sounds like. But the USFL is more bizarre to me than the AAF because at least they came out and the AAF was, it had a direction, at least it, it had a marketing pitch. It had It had everything but point. money. I'll give it that way. That was kind of the simple It had way everything but money. It had everything but the money. And I think that was always a, the biggest question mark. A plan. It was able to tell us their goals, what what they what they we should expect. Uh, with the USFL, all we're being sold is uh, nostalgia and just flat, just the word football on Fox. <laughs> that's and that's about it. And uh, also tied to the league is the the CEO Brian Woods, and it came out in the past week too that 
uh, Brian Woods, who was the, you know the head of the spring league and had that that league playing in Indianapolis as one of the hub cities last season when they were airing on Fox and uh, got deals for players to be housed in hotels and got a stadium deal is now being sued for unpaid bills to the manager of Lucas Oil Stadium and the Crown Plaza, uh, the hotel that players were staying at, uh, uh, to the tune of $1.4 million of unpaid bills. The current USFL CEO from his previous football venture, uh, unable to get all that taken care of. Now with the Fox money behind him, I would think that is going to be less of a concern, but still, that's a person that's involved with the USFL, um, obviously brought that IP to Fox and put the deal together, but just something to consider that the, the Spring League was hanging on by a thread, pivoting to the USFL. It just it doesn't seem like the sturdiest foundation for the league to to really. I mean, go it could be a, a it could be a reason why Brian Woods is not part of the ownership group anymore. Is this very he's reason? The, so he's the CEO of the USFL and, um, you know, still being uh, kept around as part of it because he did bring it together with the, with Fox, but we'll see how it all shakes out after year one for the USFL. I, I think I said this on last week's show, Brian. I think the first season will be a cinch for them to put together. Sure. Uh, in terms of the quality for us fans, the excitement they generate, the expectations will probably have to be low. And that's why I feel like they are underselling this league to start for sure because it's it's uh, not uh, – there's even the XFL, which, you know, on the road to 2020 wasn't doing huge like tw- XFL 2001 things with big events and big announcements. But they still made it a point to have media events and go out there and do media and interviews, have Oliver Luck get out there and keep the name – out there um the way the usfl is going about it like announcing the team names which was a big deal for the xfl and they i think they both were announced on the on colin cowherd show though right is this correct did that happen yes or at least they had colin cowherd and yeah so it was on the show it was like colin cowherd is like i'm gonna introduce you to my favorite teams one for my previous home and one for my current home here are the seattle and los angeles markets yeah and uh you know they, yeah, oh, you're right. They had it like different people for different cities do it. But just the way they're going about it, it's very low key for the league because it is just a spring TV show, I think, to the owners of this league more than it is an actual football league. And we will be re- reiterating that because it's the truth, at least on the surface. And we're not knocking it. We're happy uh, that cities like, I mean, this is cool. Look, you got Birmingham is getting another team. They love the AAF, uh, original XFL city back in 2001. For sure, a town that wants football, and I'm happy for them. I'm happy that Pittsburgh's getting a city it's, or getting a team in the city in the spring. Uh, but uh, the fact is that this league isn't being uh, really uh, sold to us as anything too exciting or interesting just yet. And that's the that's my honest opinion. It's intriguing, but it's not being give it sold to us like it's something that we should care about deeply. I'm very excited that these eight cities were able to receive team names this past week. <laughs> that's that's the truth. I mean, really, Birmingham got eight teams. Yeah. That's it's. That's great for them. It's like yeah, when uh, when people used to make things in the U.S. and then they uh, and then they moved them out of the U.S. but they still wanted to make it seem like they were made in the U.S. and instead of like made in the U.S.A. it was like born in the U.S.A. Oh, like this is yeah. born in Pittsburgh but made in Birmingham. Yes, born born in Tampa Bay, echo in Birmingham. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Of yeah. course, that's what it is. Well, there you go. Uh, the USFL dominating our cover too, Bryant. Let's take it back uh, and tie it back into the XFL now uh, because we got to measure it up with 2023 on the horizon beyond the USFL. Um, 
we similar to what we had to do with the AAF, uh, compare, contrast, see how the XFL reacts, if at all. Let's dive into it in this week's Hot Read. The USFL is kicking off next April 2022. The XFL planning on kicking off in 2023. So first up in the hot read this week, we have to ask, does the USFL's April kickoff and its just mere existence affect the planning in the XFL executive offices now for 2023? One iota. Is there anybody saying anything about the USFL and adjusting plans right now, Brian, at the XFL executive offices? Uh, I would be lying if I said that it did not. I don't think it's you, you put your head down, you move forward, but you know that there's um, obstacles in the way is how I put it. And you have to account for those. And you can't just say that, hey, the US, if you blow this off and say that it's nothing, you're going to run into problems because they are going to take players from you. They are going to take maybe cities from you. We'll talk about that. But there are, you know, Fox is maybe no longer a competitor for the, the broadcast. So that kind of changes your landscape of how you can negotiate, right? There's different things that actually affect this. Do I think it, it tips the scales that much? I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're okay. But Oh, yeah. The, the well, scales sorry, are not okay. tip. Hashtag we want it, our jobs back. Hashtag we want our jobs back. But yeah, the the scales are not tipped. The, the road has, you know, maybe some traffic on it, we could say, if you, if you, want, to, if you want to add that in there. Uh, there's... In 2022, another football league on the road in your way to getting to 2023. How do you account for that? Well, you see they're kicking off in April. Does that mean that you don't – If do you assume they're going to be kicking off in April the following year and do you plan on going head-to-head with them? I say it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Going head-to-head with the USFL, if you're going to have TV, which the XFL will, uh, and streaming and all the, you know, the media rights – you're going to be fine there. The important part is spreading the wealth with players. How do you set yourself apart from the USFL and and in terms of luring players to your league? And it's going to come down to which league can pay the players the most money. And quite frankly, if you look at what the USFL's model is currently going into 2022, they don't plan on playing paying players at a competitive rate. They pa- they plan on paying players at a rate that's going to get them on the field just enough so that so they could have a TV show, so they could have games to broadcast. If they're competing with the XFL and there is a, a market for the players to sell themselves and, and get more cash, the USFL Fox is not going to fork it out over unless this first season in 2022 is ju- just a smash hit. If that doesn't happen, you, they'll they're going to pull the plug, and then let's say have at it XFL. We don't, you know, we got in there just to have to get by in 2022, and maybe they have no plans on anything after 2022, which is kind of my hunch because unless there's big investors coming into the USFL for year two, they're not going to. They're gonna, not going to pay players at a competitive rate if the XFL is going in there willing to do that, which we assume they will be. With new ownership, with um, money behind it, with Redbird Capital, uh, knowing you know, that you actually have to pay players in order to get them on the field. Uh, I, I feel that's going to really, when it comes down to it, that's going to be the case. Which league is going to pay more? And if both leagues are going to nickel and dime players, then... That's really going to spread it thin and put them both in trouble. So I think that's what, where the USFL being around is fascinating. But I just don't feel like they're going to put that pressure on the XFL. And they're probably going to move out of the way. If I'm betting, the more we talk about it, Bryant. So its existence, uh, the April kickoff in 2022, it's really just something to observe. And maybe you plan on it being around when you kick off, but assuming... Uh, it, it 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 does still might not affect you because you're going to come in there fully prepared and hopefully able to pay players more than the USFL will be and coaches of course um, and really if you're gambling 
I don't even think they'll be around when we kick off in 2023. If I'm, well, I only gamble in Houston. Of the I mean, that's what I've always said. Yes. I've said that for years. Of so course, gamble in Houston. Um, there is a a big differentiator between these two leagues, and that is that the XFL knows they're going to lose money. We always talk about that, right? Knowing that you're going to lose money because it's how much you're going to lose. Can you keep that number as small as possible so you can move on to, to number two and number three? The Fox Network are not... They have they have goals. They have um, bottom lines that they need to make. They cut TV shows after eight episodes. Projections, you know. yes. Yeah. If those things don't get hit, if they don't see a moneymaker here, they're not going to keep trying. They're not going to keep doing this. And I think that's a disadvantage for them. Because Fox yeah. wants this. Where the XFL obviously wants this, but they're willing to wait a little bit longer, I think, than Fox is. It, that, an- another good point. The the building of a league is something the XFL is interested in here. The owners of the USFL currently are not in league building mode. They're in producing football games mode. Big difference. Uh, they got a they got player accommodations paid for, a field paid for, and they're trying to get this thing done at the bare minimum so that they can use the rest of it to pay for players and, and get that situated. How quickly they do it is going to be amazing because it is December almost and they kick off in April. Crazy to think in five months they're going to put all that infrastructure together, even if it's all in one hub city. I mean, you saw how long it took. The XFL had a hub city moment in Houston for their training camp, but it took a couple of years to build up to that. They're doing this in five months. Um, They're building up to have football games produced. The XFL league building, like Brian said, big difference there. So when you see that the USFL is in cities, quote unquote, it has to. It has teams playing in cities, uh, or playing for cities, not in cities. Oh, there you go. Let's let's ass- let's assume now, even though it makes an ass out of you and me, let's assume there's a year two for the USFL. They're kicking off in April, and the XFL's kicking off 2023, whenever April, February doesn't matter. But we know the USFL is expanding out of Birmingham, Bryant, hypothetically, and playing in these eight cities. The XFL in 2023 debuting. Do they have any teams in those cities? If the teams are playing simultaneously, or the leagues are playing simultaneously. Um, I think obvious answer is Houston. Um, we had when we did our um, coast to coast, like who, what teams will play where, blah blah blah, all this stuff. I don't think any of these cities were actually on our list. Way back when in 2018, we're like, where should everyone play? I don't think we selected any of these at all. Not Pittsburgh. I think definitely, I think Vince even said, not Pittsburgh. They don't support anything. Don't do Pittsburgh. Are Pitt games even selling out at this point? No. No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell to Pitt, but no. <laughs> no. And they play, what, how, how far do they play from the campus? Well, that's why it's a pain. They play cross town from the campus, so that's a big sticking point with Pitt fans. They don't play on campus, but still, it's Heinz Field's the easiest stadium to get to in America. I mean, it's very, it's very yeah, easy. Yeah, nobody goes. Yeah, totally. And, and they still don't go. Um, Vince is right whenever he said that back when. Um, and yeah, the, the, you know, we brought up all these cities, of course, or the and, well, states, because like, now the Michigan Panthers truly do just play for Michigan because their home is not Detroit or East Lansing or Flint or anywhere because they're just the Michigan Panthers. Same with the New Jersey Generals. Are Panthers be... in Michigan? I, well, the cool thing about the Michigan Panthers are they were named the Michigan Panthers because they had the Lions, so they wanted to give Michigan fans another cat to root for that was maybe more ferocious and successful. Which is not hard to do. Lions are cool, but Detroit Lions are Panthers. pretty tame. Yeah, yeah they're, they're that's fine. Although the Steelers can't beat them, but that's another show. Um, the 
the, so like that the, line from uh, from what's the from Madagascar. Yeah, the, uh, the only thing I know, I, I you know, I'm I'm childless, so I haven't seen that one yet, Brian. But I know Ben Stiller's in that one, right? Is that the voice of the lion? I believe he is. Yeah. Oh, see, I knew that. Some movie buff here. I feel like I'm on Jeopardy with you sometimes with all this trivia. But I know and it, history, history buff to you. A big history buff, but playing in the same cities. I mean, like like we said. Uh, back back way back when Brian brought it up, we broke these cities down, and ultimately none of them except Houston, uh, and and I guess New Jersey because we said New York, New Jersey oh, area. We said um, we didn't say Houston would get a team. Just all, all cards on the table. We we didn't pick one team in Texas. We didn't. No. Nope. No, we didn't. For like our we picked, we picked Portland. They, we picked were Portland, announced. L.A. Oh wow. Chicago. So you're going back to like tw- a 2018 Columbus. episode or yeah. a 2019 well, episode. Hold on, hold on. So we picked LA, Portland, Chicago, Columbus, New York. Man. We didn't pick a Texas team? We there must have been a, a voting. Team. I know Vince and I definitely voted for Texas then back then. No, so Everybody could go check that episode out wherever oh, it is yeah. somewhere we'll back in back the archive. Damn, what were the eight teams? I'm so bummed I don't remember them all. But that so of these eight cities in the USFL, literally only one of the cities, I guess, if you count well, New Jersey, break it Jersey, down. Any Houston city was the only Jersey. one. Houston was the only one. Tampa Bay, we were already talking about them moving that team. New Orleans, no, thank you. Birmingham, I mean, maybe, but still, I see the the lure of going to Birmingham, but who knows? Uh, Philadelphia, maybe. I think there was talk that that Philadelphia was like. One of the teams that maybe the XFL wanted to go to, but they didn't want to have three teams up in the Northeast. So there's that. Uh, New Jersey. I mean, if you're going to play at Red Bull, which I oh, believe yeah. is in New Jersey, then maybe. But if you're going to play Hell in yeah. that MetLife, you know, move along. Michigan. Where? Where are you going to play in Michigan? The Pontiac Silverdome, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Best. Yes. Isn't that in um, New Orleans? No, that's no, nice. now you got me confused like Hulk Hogan. Come on, <laughs> and then the Pittsburgh Maulers. I mean, come on, like Pittsburgh. We all know about Pittsburgh. So, if it weren't for the Steelers, the si- Pittsburgh wouldn't have sports teams, probably. The NHL well, basically giving them Sidney Crosby. Well, the fate it's called fate, Brian. It's, it's, a, it's that's gifted. a different question, gifted. it's called a gift. Well, either way, the USFL chose in terms of cities to represent in Birmingham. Uh, we we would say, you know, not the best cities for a spring league because I mean this is a sh- an episode and research and, and discussions way back in 2018 that we had for the XFL. Where do they kick off? What are the best places? Ultimately, uh, none of these made it on our list, uh, and. For, for various reasons. But then ultimately the XFL chose what two of these pl- or three of these places uh, with Tampa Bay, Houston and New Jersey. Um, but if XFL 2023 is kicking off and the USFL is actually playing, Brian, I'm going to say you're going to get a Houston Roughnecks or Houston team in the XFL. You're going to get a New York, New Jersey team as well. Tampa Bay, might not happen. Uh, might that maybe that moves somewhere else in Florida? But I would say at least two teams in the XFL will be playing in the same city as a USFL team. If, of course, the big if, if the USFL is actually playing in 2023, and even further than that, actually playing in cities other than Birmingham. And do you th- man, it's going to sound so bad. Uh, look, the XFL looks at this list and doesn't say anything. We're not going to not play or are going to play in any of these cities because the USFL is going to. That's just the way it is. Um, I will say this. Do you think, let's say if you're a Fox guy and and you know that this is a one and done type thing. You want to get this done. Have it out there. Have a good time. Let's roll. Let's move on. Do you announce that as a once in a lifetime type thing? You say once in a lifetime, come to Birmingham. Watch the USFL. No, no, because they they do have. I think 
I it's similar to the uh, XFL CFL negotiations. They have an idea of how this thing could maybe turn out, but they don't quite know what season two will be or what they want it to be. And that's the very interesting thing. And we're saving that in our back pocket for an episode, Brian, because it's one of the coolest. What do you th- what do you throw in there? Oh, the I threw the pickle on the window, seeing what happens. Oh, it's, it's, go, 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 go. go. So it's one of the coolest things to think about with the USFL to me. The possibilities of what it, they could actually do with it if they actually invest in it or sell it, make it recognizable to the public and then get it sold or invested upon by people that actually want to build a league with it or maybe 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 a 16 team usfl xfl venture in 2023 i don't know i don't know i'm just throwing that out there could it happen probably not but it's something to think about it's an interesting point maybe it's a uh, uh, just a try a trial for the Fox people and and putting themselves out there, maybe showing themselves off to the XFL. The XFL was already in talks with the CFL, so why wouldn't it be open to talking to the USFL? Something to think about. And I don't want to know your thoughts on that, Brian, because we can definitely dive into that. We're ending the hot read here, but I definitely want to hear from everybody watching and listening this week at XFL Show about everything we talked about today especially that last one. That's an upcoming topic for sure. Merger, whatever you want to call it. Could you fathom in a, in 2023 at all that the USFL and XFL actually aren't foes, but friends or one? We the ones of spring football. Maybe. There's so much that could happen. Like, what, what do you want the XFL to Don't do? Don't get a headache like, thinking about it. I know. Just just let, let these things happen. Let the USFL happen. Who knows? It could be this great success and, you know, whatever. It, there's so many things that could happen. All we have to do is deal with what we have in front of us, what's been told to us. And right now, it's the USFL trying to put this thing together in so little time as the XFL moving forward with an entire new management team trying to get on to get on to 2023 so that's what we know yep and i think what i think what we can at least i came out of this really realizing it and at least we put it to words one league is building a league the other league is building up to have football games on tv and those are two different things and that's the difference between the usfl and the xfl right now at least 100 percent from from our perspective, just seeing how they're announcing it and the structures that they're setting up to prop these leagues up and the runway they're giving themselves. That's a huge tell on how you actually, what you actually think about and your motivations behind the league. So that's what I think. And that, you know, that's maybe not what you think out there. If you're a diehard USFLer and they're out there, let us know. Uh, Give us all that optimism about the league. We have some of it, but of course we're looking at it realistically and want to hear all the opinions on it at XFL show. Brian, I'm excited. These are pretty polarizing topics and subjects when it comes to two different leagues and the USFL, two different brands, both with history. Now it gets in. It's very juicy and there's, there's emotion attached to everything. Now I will say this. And this is not just me tooting our own horn, but this is just stating facts. There was nobody around doing this when the XFL and the AAF were in the same situation back in 2018. Nobody but us here. The only two people in the universe that were doing that then are right here on this show. And so you can catch us every single Sunday right here on your favorite podcast app. That's Google, Apple, Stitcher, TuneIn, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you give us that five-star review and tell your friends about us. If you got a question, comment, or topic you want us to cover, uh, well, then text or call the XFL fan line 724-565-4XFL. Remember, standard text messenger rates do apply. Uh, also, if you got a question or a comment or a topic you want us to cover, I already said that. That's fine. Follow us on all social media platforms at XFL Show as well. Or if you want to say hi, come subscribe to us and watch us on YouTube at XFL.show, the official 
website of this is the xfl show and uh don't forget to check out our sponsors pretty easy podcast go to pretty easy and get started today because they make podcasting uh pretty easy uh, forgive me because i've had a sick child for the last two days it's hot i'm hot it's late it's been a long weekend and turkey and ham and oh that's so much turkey it's a lot oh my goodness but there were two other people in the universe also at the time doing that with, with Oh, that us. is true. Yes. That's true. Shout Vince. out to Vince and Jake. Yes, that's true. They were in the, on there as well. <laughs> They're just not doing it right but, now. No, but guest spots RIP. always ava- always available. No, they're still around, everybody. Don't worry. I don't know. I haven't heard we'll, of them. I haven't heard from them. But we'll, we'll, maybe we'll try to get I, – I really actually want to hear Jake's thoughts about the USFL. So Vince sent me a picture the other day of this big quote shoulder he was cooking, and then he never texted me after that. I wonder what happened there. That's one of my favorite things about being an adult, is that sometimes you just have a friend who texts you a big picture of meat. Yeah. You need no context. Yeah, no. No, need no context whatsoever. I just tell my wife, I'm like, hey, I just sent them a picture of my meat. <laughs> Great. <laughs> he loves it. Give me, give me the heart of OG. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, friendships. All right. Well, that's that's this week's episode, Brian. I had a lot of fun talking logos with you, even though I did not expect that. You asked for it, though. Is there anything you want to conjure up or manifest so that we have a good topic Look, for next week? It seems you have a magical are, power. Te- team names are great, and logos and colors are great. But when are we going to get uniforms? There you go. Helmets. It's throwback, it's throwback week every week in the USFL. It's great. <laughs> it is great. Look, all the success in the world to them. Really, honestly. I'm just calling balls and strikes. You, you can't. And maybe people end up hating you like Cowboy Joe West. But you're just well, calling, he's ball calling and balls, and, balls and strikes and balls. He, he's, he calls strikes and balls, not balls and strikes. That's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what team you are. It depends who you are. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for watching and listening to this week's show and riding down this road to 2023 with us. Uh, We're having a blast now that there's another league in the way. There's obstacles on the road. It's just, it's, and it's a great time of year. It's the holidays. We're a little tired because it's the end of the year, but also we're eating too much at this point. I'm back in the United States, Brian. So I went full-on holiday mode as soon as you're, i hit the ground you're in miami i'm in miami i'm in miami it's it's not a united states football league city nor an xfl city so what does that tell kind you kind of america what does that tell you <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I'm, I'm back baby i'm back home ish and i'm ready for what's going to happen at the end of this year actually i think hopefully it's just more you know dipping our toe into some information because 2022 you realize in about a month's time, just over a month, it's going to be nonstop. It's going to be all sorts of stuff to sink our teeth into, analyze, react to. So maybe just rest and enjoy this time of year right now, Brian. Take it easy. Don't get stressed out too much. It's Don't say tough. that out loud because if the baby hears you, she's not going to let me. So thank you. <laughs> she's like, what? She's not stressed. I got to get up. Matt, a I got scar. Put it on. It's like if I fall asleep, she just smacks me a few times. Make sure <laughs> two in the morning. Don't wait. Don't fall asleep, Dad. So that's, all right. That's, well, let, we got to end this thing. So so how do I get her to watch XFL reruns? Go to sleep. Oh, I, if you want to talk two thousand one XFL games too, I could. I, I think I could get a, a, some watch watch alongs for me, you, and and baby. <laughs> I'm down do for that. Record that. Put it on. Put on the Patreon. <coughs> baby watches XFL. I'm in. <laughs> the XFL's first baby. It is. The XFL's first baby. And uh, also, this is, uh, this is you know what? This is really uh, a special time because we're coming up on episode 200. Brian, do we have anything special planned for that? Two oh, we have episodes tons of away. Things. Two tons of things uh, special. Only, only 14 more sleeps. Until 14 um, more sleeps till 200. Until the, Maybe we'll have Kenny Pickett on. Kenny Pickett. Hail to Pitt. We'll have Kenny Pickett talking about winning the Heisman and going to the XFL. That makes you know? sense for this show. Totally. Yeah. How, how amazing would that Talk be? Talk about his future. Uh, manifest, XFL you have career. the power. Manifest it. Kenny Pickett's <laughs> joining the XFL after winning the Heisman. Uh, yeah. 
I, I like to speak truths. That's what I do. I try to get him to do it. Whatever. All right. Well, I'll pray for that. And I'll uh, pray that you all join us next week and really uh, stay healthy and happy this holiday season. And uh, we'll be back next week to discuss all things XFL, of course. Send me those red notice reviews at XFL Show. And whatever USFL stuff comes out as well. And all things spring football related right here on the original, official XFL podcast. Only one in the universe ever. It's still there. I'm Alan. This is the XFL show. Remember, they're listening.